Welcome to the Burning Hearts Ministries. We envision all men and all nations burning for Jesus, living victoriously in their eternal ordinations. As you listen to this sermon, we are certain that you will be equipped for the work of God. You're in for a great time in the Word of God, so put of distractions. Be blessed as you listen. Five thousand pages is already in his mind in three seconds. If you are not that, and I'm very sure you are not that, I'm sure if you are, you are possessed. It's a demon. <laughs> Write what God has told you, because in the day that you need to regurgitate that instruction to obey it, Satan will come and tell you, "Has did God really say?" You know that what he told the woman in the garden. He said, "Did has God really said that you should?" You know, and. You know the thing about the devil is that he does not just speak. He will speak the language of your lust. So he would have studied your life to see the things you like the most. <laughs> he would have studied your life to see your greatest inclinations, the, what you are most likely to choose when you offer two options. He knows if you have your way, you will go for a fair girl and not a dark girl. If you have your way, to get married though. If you have to choose a wife, that's what I'm saying. Let me put caveat. Until we reach heaven, we have to put caveat because. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me tell you a story. In 2021, I felt like, you know, I was done with school, so I was like, Lord, it's time for a damsel. I need to. Glory. <laughs> Amen. 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 I need to find a good thing now. And so, any meeting I go for, any place I go for, if I see maybe. The, <laughs> You judge me. <laughs> Any meeting I go for and I see maybe the person I'm leading prayer is on fire. And maybe, the, you know some of all those churches, <laughs> some of all those churches, they will not put the person I didn't do, they put their name there. I'll come check Instagram. I'll check to see if she has a boyfriend. Okay, this one is single. <laughs> Potential wife. Because I'm looking for somebody that's on fire. So the, my search is streamlined. <laughs> Or I meet somebody somewhere else, maybe the person sat down beside me in church or something. And you know, ah, in one month, I can have like five different ideas of, you know. So there's. <laughs> so, and I made one mistake to go on a fast one period in that same 2021. And I was just praying and fasting. I didn't have prayer point. That's how I pray and fast most times. I don't have prayer point. I would just keep on praying and fasting until the day God decides to meet me on that fast. Sometimes he will come and say, I can see that you're fasting. And then he will continue. <laughs> he will not come after like, hmm. Hallelujah. So one of those days, I remember, I remember vividly where I was. So I was walking. I was walking. Somewhere. I think I had to cut my hair. I was still living, I was still squatting in someone's house then. So I was walking back to the house. And then it was as though he sent an angel that just came as to it was not as literal as this. It happened in my spirit, but it was so real I can interpret the way it happened. Eh? I know you don't understand. Just keep just keep just keep listening. <laughs> so it was like he came and stood beside me and said, and in fact, not only in church, even if I see you on the road and you look like you are responsible, you know, if you judge me. <laughs> so he came and he spoke to me that day. You know what he told me? He said, Oga. <laughs> he didn't call me Oga, but the way he said it was as though, <laughs> the way my spiritual father, when he was talking when, when to talk to me, he would tell me Oga, I know, say, <laughs> Yes, sir. He said, you will not find your wife on the streets. Neither will you struggle to locate her. Your duty is to keep seeking me. And I will connect you to her. And when I do, you will not doubt. And he went. He pained me because all those I speak. Hey! Kaya Volo Contemina Saya. Hey! But you know what? I had heard God. And I, I, if, you, if you have truly heard God, you can't deny it. You know those things that people will come and meet me and say, Sir, I don't know if it's God that spoke. It's, it's not God. If you have not hear God, go and pray again. <laughs> don't act on anything. If you are not sure, go and pray again. Eh? But I did God. So I was doing NYC camp. And I heard all manner of atrocities that go on in that camp. Stories of how how the mighty fall, how are the mighty falling? That somebody that has been praying in tongues for long, keeping 
very strong consecrations and all of that, you know, die hard holiness person. You can't even shake a lady self before. You know, that's how, hallelujah, sorry, sorry. That's how pious and sanctimonious you were. I heard of how those people entered camp and began to conduct impartation service. <laughs> May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> I heard those stories though. And some of the people I heard that that thing happened to, they, they fast past me. If I say God, they won't get bright at future. Future bright past my own. <laughs> and I look at myself, I say, me like this. And I want to go to that place with normal eyes. I say, it's a lie. And you know what? In that camp, I prayed in tongues throughout. Don't believe me, oh, because your mind will struggle to grasp. I did it so that I can be. That one was, I was not looking for power. <laughs> I was not looking for power oh, just to live, just to survive the perils of our day. That's why I was praying. Just, Jesus, keep me. So, do we wake up in by four or whenever I go for, what do they call that thing in the morning again? That's not the good that happens early in the morning with Saeed or something. I don't know. No, Saeed is later. Uh -huh. All of, mm. In that morning devotion, did none of them blessed me. No devotion blessed me. I'm, maybe it blessed you. So I decided to locate my own blessing somehow. So as far as I'm awake, my mouth was moving. If, I, if there's no soldier around, I'll plug one ear of earpiece. And I, one of those days we were on the assembly line and I was so high in spirit. I think Kelvin was near me that day. I had to give him, I said, okay, I hear this song. Let's, I cannot ascend on my own. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the back there? <laughs> In the same camp. That's how I lived on camp. And you know what? As I was living that way, no, not to me, God was multiplying the grace upon my life. He was honoring my investment in the spirit and my resolve and decision to live for him. I tell you, I had options on camp. In camp. From camp. <laughs> he plenty. If I wanted to fornicate in my life, that would have been the period. Are you following me? How many of you have not gone to camp yet? One, two. Just two of you. Three, four. You are going soon. This council is for you. <laughs> Take heed. <laughs> Your only duty in that camp, when you wake up in the morning, is what? Ba bo bo. Just be speaking in tongues. If the day I knew that something was happening to me was when I was speaking to one guy. His name is Ben. He's a friend of my wife. We we're talking one day. I said, I don't know who is Uyosa in Benin. That's like an assistant head of a fellowship. He said that he has it. <laughs> God. He said yeah, he's running a fellowship in Benin. His assistant's name is Uyosa. I said, what? You know, I did like as if normal thing. I said, oh yeah, you know, God. <laughs> God said. <laughs> okay? That was like one of the few times then that I had gone that deep in accuracy. I said, so something they happen. Then I will be on my bed in camp. And as I lie down, it's like my spirit will leave my body. And I will see stuff happening around. Maybe there's a time I sent a witch to camp. Mm hmm we met at the gate in the spirit don't believe me oh. just go and pursue god as you are chasing god a point will come that you will remember these stories i told you because these adventures are not to be monopolized it's available to everyone who will seek after god have you read psalms 45 verse 1 it says i speak of the things that my hands have made touching with the king so as you begin to chase after god there are experiences you will have Eh? The day you find the person that has also touched that thing in the spirit, you guys will just, you, it's as though, even if you're just meeting that day, it's as though you have been friends for a long time. Because they say that blood is thicker than water, or but spirit is thicker than blood. When you touch something in the spirit and you find somebody that has touched it too, <laughs> you have a very strange kind of friendship. That's how I met Pastor Nelson. You know? We had never met anywhere before, but we were looking for the same thing in the spirit and somehow we stumbled onto one another. <laughs> Back to my story. So that's how I survived camp. Mm. There was a day in camp, eh? I had one crush. Fair to look upon. <laughs> Beautiful like the angels. Oh my God. I know you think I'm telling, I'm, it's a poem. I'm telling you the truth. Okay. Black says some of our brothers, they don't know it's in the fine woman. Tough. May the Lord help you. <laughs> And one day, <laughs> now I'm saying this for you, eh, to help you, because God helped me. 
So one day we're in um, what they call that satanic thing that they do every night in camp. Social variety rituals unto devils. All manner of atrocity takes place on, the, on those grounds. Destinies are traded on those grounds. You don't know. <laughs> One of those nights I was in that satanic gathering. What the Bible called the headquarters of Satan. <laughs> That's where I was. And this lady that was a crush, you know, was on my right. Mm. And so at some point in that camp, during that night, Mary said, Elvis, kiss me. <laughs> you think that people they fear this grace when you carry it? The oil on your head will make you more attractive. Uh -huh. Now you they define you, you. <laughs> you know, if I didn't survive, I won't be telling this story today. After I left camp and my eyes were opened. You know what? <laughs> Did they you know what? Ah, the stories are plenty. Oh. Let me jump forward a bit. Like three days' time, you know, one of all those mornings. While I was praying in tongues, I was cut off and my eyes were open, but I was not seeing anything around. I was somewhere else. <laughs> and that's my life. And I was, I was there. I saw the lady appear to me and said, I want your soul. You might not believe me. Or I wrote this in my notes. It's still there. You see the dates and everything. <laughs> in the vision, she appeared to me. And like a very desperate spirit was speaking through her. She said, I want your soul. I opened my eyes. I said, hey! Jesus. Now you think everybody just want to be your guy. Now you think everybody just want... Hmm. Satan can never offer you pleasure for the purpose of pleasure. If he's offering you something that you like, it's because he has seen something greater in your life. That that thing he's offering you has become a worthy ticket in the spirit for exchange to take place. <laughs> That's the day I began to run. I've been disobeying that scripture before. I, I, you know, I was seeing potential wife here. As, thank God that my eyes were open. Thank God I was praying. I tell you, I would have fallen on that, on that camp. Some of them would go, they kiss this one, kiss that one. You don't know you are, you are exchanging. See, you know, I never thought I would say this like this. If I had not seen some things in the spirit, eh, my counsel would have been different. And, but I'm telling you that many of all those things that you think is just like that, oh God, it's not just like that. Oh. Especially if God has given you certain consecrations and you break them. <laughs> I'm telling you why many people don't ever become great. Some of us might think that the worst thing that can happen to you is that you fornicate. Mm -mm. That's what it's Satan that is making you think like that. So a, there can be a, a grace on your life that the consecration that is needed to power this level of prophetic accuracy will be that you never behold something that is never behold iniquity. So, if other people are watching BB Niger, or God, you cannot watch it because there is certain information that will enter your mind from that show that will become the seed that Satan will use. To <laughs> so, the day you are God wants to speak to you, you'll be seeing BB Niger to have corrupted your soul. You think that show is normal? I came to tell you that. Mm, you are, who is that person? You are blessed. God bless you. I came to say what? Mm. May the Lord give you understanding. That's how I survived camp. Oh. That's how I survived camp. And when I was done with camp, I, uh, I knew that something strong had rested. I knew that something strange had rested. <laughs> praying to live, not just praying because you want something from God. Both are valid, though, um, but pray more to live. Just So I was talking about in mind. I don't even know how I got here. Some years ago, my spiritual father released an article. He called it, Mind Your Mind. Mind your mind. Be careful the kind of information you let in. It's not every, it's not every conversation you should entertain. 
Are you hearing me? Brothers, it's not, you know, so there's, a, there's a kind of very weird spirituality that some people have that you think that because you have attained such a level of stature, you can now just talk about anything. It's not of God, though. That if your fellow guy will miss you, you say, oh boy, you see that babe? Ah, over that. Guy, walk away. Run. <laughs> Run. Because you have an understanding. See, God knows how the mind is. He created it that way to be like a soil where he, because God himself, he created the mind to be like that so that he himself can plant his own ideas, plant his visions there. That's how he operates. That's how he created the mind. But it can be operated out of God's plan, outside of the will of God for how your mind should operate. So be very careful. Though. So everything that you do, so it's time for, for instance, we pray every night by 9 p.m. Morning, uh, after 9 p.m. As it's ending like this, you are in fact doing the prayer stuff, you are scrolling Instagram. As you are done, you are going to watch something, you are going to do see, be very careful. Especially what you do immediately you finish praying. You see, we are, we are losing the culture. We are losing the culture. We have mastered how to talk to God. We are losing how to wait and listen for God to talk back to us. That's how many of us are praying now. You will say things like, I've been praying, I've been praying, but it's like I'm not hearing God. Oh God, after praying, what did you do? You are asking God, oh, you are listening now. We've forgotten the lost art of meditation. So God has been speaking to you, but you are the one that has not been hearing because you are distracted with so many other things. Sometimes, uh, while you are praying, I know that it's good to keep your schedule. It's spiritual, it's godly. There are some times that the Holy Ghost will interrupt your prayer point, your prayer time, because he wants to talk to you. He's not telling you stop praying. He's just telling you just listen now. That's the point you open your journal, open your book, and begin to write. There are things that God told me in 2016. Is this, this year I'm seeing them. I've, thank God I wrote them down. Because on campus then, it looked like myself, you, and a few other of yours. It looked like we just, we'd not have, we were just praying that that's all we could do. <laughs> One is like, when class ends by 5, by like 7 p.m., we'll converge at HOD ground. And no, no prayer point. Yourself, no prayer points. We'll just back, back. These guys, forget that these guys play keyboard. He's a man, he carry fire. He's a man of fire. <laughs> it was the first person I heard that the, a strange dimension of tongues called Jige Jige. <laughs> Can you remember? <laughs> that day I was with Pastor Nelson in the church. The guy was praying. He said Jige. I said, ah! <laughs> Now the guy with that. <laughs> He's a man of every celebrating. I mean. <laughs> So then it's on campus, we were just praying. We did not have prayer points most of the time. We just knew that as we are praying these tongues, there's something that God is working in us. That it will be evident, maybe in the latter generation, I don't know, but the level of satisfaction that we were receiving from that, that venture of prayer was, was, it was enough for me. <laughs> I did not have prayer points, but when I was done, I knew God had answered. It's strange. I, don't, I can't explain that. I didn't come with a prayer point. But after speaking in tongues for like one hour, I knew God had answered. Answered what? That's the question. There was a note of victory that was bubbling in my spirit and a certain kind of joy that should only be the result of an answered prayer that I was experiencing. But we kept on doing it until the point came that, you know, the encounters I started having after school made me realize that sometimes, eh, and I, I, I wouldn't want to make this statement without first laying a very strong and long doctrinal premise. But it now looked as though God in his wisdom permits this my analogy. It was as though all the prayers you are praying is being stored up. <laughs> it's being stored up. Just like in Revelation 5, it's in a golden censer because the prayers are ascending as incense and it's being stored, it's being stored until it reaches a tipping point. It's, the result will not. <laughs> Amen. I've reached different tipping points in my life. Tipping points. That when I got to that point, I knew that, oh, is the thing I've been praying about since 2016 that just started happening in 2019. The reason why many of us don't break forth in the spirit is because we don't care to tarry long enough. Stay. You see, many times prayer will not make sense. So just stay. God is making something out of you. Just stay. Just remain. God is working out information that you don't even have access to. Think about the future. Just stay. 
Just do what? Stay. Oh. God is aligning stuff. Have you not read that song? Heard that song? It's changing everything in obedience to God. The Holy Ghost. That's how it works. So, oh. as you are praying, you may, you may not even know what is happening now. <laughs> Sometimes you even go to the place of prayer and your only prayer point is, Hey! <laughs> has that happened to you before? <laughs> Because the burden is too much. The things we prayed for is, is, is too much. I had too many issues on campus. Too many issues. Too many. Thank God for the gift of tongues. Because if I, I, I don't even know how to articulate my issues into words. I know your life has just been a bed of roses. You just wake up on Sunset Beach, running with the Holy Ghost in the morning, say, how are you, Lord? I say, I'm good. You know? My own eh, is like, is this Psalm 79 that he took us through the fire? <laughs> through the... <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> so in those times, all I could do is pray in tongues. Just pray in tongues. It's like a refinery. You know how crude oil is? It's very undesirable in its crude state. But as you, as you, as you subject it to different temperatures and burnings, there are byproducts that begin to come out of crude oil. The same crude oil that you saw, that because of the smell, you began to detest it. As it begins to burn at a certain temperature, you now see that that thing that you don't like can actually power this entire building. Can actually power an entire aeroplane. At different levels of burnings, there are different byproducts that come out of it. It's the same prayer I'm talking about. Speaking in tongues is like, it's like a refinery. <laughs> because the Holy Ghost in you is all things that God has given unto you. There's nothing that God wants to do in your life that he will do outside of the Spirit. And the way you can partner with what God wants to do in your life is to burn at that level of intensity that can sponsor spiritual stuff. Are you here? Yes, Are you still here? Yes, Amen. Amen. I know, you know many of us don't like prayer anymore. I don't like prayer like that. Though. <laughs> it's not as if I'm, I, I love it. But I've, I, I've discovered that I was, I'm, a, I'm a being to pray. I've been condemned to prayer. Yeah. yeah well, mm. I've been condemned to it. Almost, not almost, of recent, not almost, but before now, many times when I want to pray, I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like, there's nothing in me that wants to pray. Everything in me wants to maybe open my phone, play COD or you know, COD mobile, or just go out, go and watch one new movie in the cinema, or just open YouTube, or just play game, or just, that's, I'll be guy man, that's what I want to do if you leave me. But I know a secret. You know, in the world, they say fake it until you make it. In the realm of the spirit, it's stir it up until it rests. You can actually stir up the influence of the spirit. The one that you, there's a way you can pray to love into, into loving prayer. <laughs> you can stir it up. It's like wine. Have you know have you seen somebody that was just okay, maybe was just okay, he went to a beer parlor, it was what they call sober. He went to a beer parlor and they gave him the first bottle. You mean what does this like anymore? You know that. That for much, not really good. Like that. I don't like the way the guy been in the play. He drank the first bottle. He was CGC normally. The guy does a pass, any hour pass, you know, one thing, one thing. When he gets to the fifth bottle, you say, hey! You see the way the guy scored that go, oh boy. The same gist though. <laughs> but something else is sponsoring the gist at this time. If something as mundane as alcohol can intoxicate a person, you see, that's why Paul will now use that analogy to say, be not drunk with wine. It's a falling means to achieve intoxication. But what? Be filled with the Spirit. And your experience yeah, is not so different. It's just happening on, with a drunk man, for from a drunk man. It's not really that different. They're only happening in different realms, different dimensions. See, because the, a man that is high is seeing what you are not seeing. <laughs> Something else is instructing. The, you know, two of you can be walking in his own head. The earth is rotating like this. So you can see. It's not because it's falling. Or the earth is actually rolling in his eye. That's why he's trying to find balance. That's what is happening to that guy. A different set of laws are powering him at that point. So Paul says, be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. He didn't stop there. He says, speaking to one another. He says, making melodies in your hearts to the Lord. If you're a music minister and you're struggling to download songs, it's because you've not yet been filled. Even as a believer, there's a way you can be filled to the point that you can start to, it says making melody. It's a product of being filled. Hallelujah. 
It's a product of being filled. It's just making melodies in your heart to the Lord. Speaking to one another in psalms and in hymns, in spiritual songs. Hallelujah. You know, this is not really my message. But it's what God will have me say. Making melodies in your heart. So let me crown my thoughts by going back to what I was saying before. Mind your mind, all right? Mind what you expose your mind to. And I want you to make it a practice this week. You will see the difference when we meet again on Sunday, this coming Sunday. This week, just be, be very deliberate about the kind of things you watch, the kind of conversations you engage in. <laughs> there are people that I've had conversations with, in, that, in the course of that conversation, they remember that God actually used to use them on campus. God actually called them, and the consciousness of that call was reignited, and they began to follow Jesus again from a conversation. <laughs> From a normal conversation. There are other people that, from a conversation, they began to desire things that God is not desiring for them. You just talk to somebody, finish, and you, a fellow guy, and you developed a new lust. The guy, the guy was telling you how, oh boy, this guy, guy and you now said, you know, sit down, now come and say, have you considered from a conversation? From a conversation. From a conversation. Be careful the kind of friends you keep, oh. You know, I made a mistake on campus then. I thought, you know, not even about friendship now. Um, there was a, a time I was at the ATM machine at Kafuan and my 200 level. And I thought, you know, the Bible says, be good unto all men. <laughs> so one woman came to the ATM and she was, I met her there after chapel service one day. And she was there by the ATM. And I don't know if you can remember this story. And while she was there, you know, she was talking to people and she was doing as if her ATM would try and do, 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 bring it out. It's not work. Bring the, it's not work. So you now go to my talk. I said, my son. And she drove a Jeep. I said, Ma, my ATM is not working, but my daughter is in Nesta Hall. I need to get some money to give on to her. One thing, one thing. Can you help me withdraw? When I get out of school, I'll pay into your account. Me with my small 20K where I get for account, that they feel like philanthropists. <laughs> they just send me that 20K that day. <laughs> my pocket money for that month. I said, oh, No, sure, no problem, ma'am. No problem. And I will do, I will do the money. Before I gave her, I, I lost my piece small, but I did not think about it. I didn't think of it as anything, so I gave her the money. So I was expecting that she would even double itself, though she was sounding like, oh, this, this woman hold it. <laughs> I don't know that she go hold my money. <laughs> I did not see the money that first day. The next day, uh, you know, because we don't have phones, so after, if you see there, I will carry my laptop and look for Wi Fi. I will go just my, so I can check my email if I will see a lot. I, Jesus Christ. During class, I go escape class, go, go reception, where Wi Fi day to check. Balance is, is saying about 3,000 to something. Hey! <laughs> At that point, I had to cry for help. I had to tell my guy, I said, oh boy, they don't, they don't ban me. <laughs> So one of my friends, Alero, she now bought a carton of carbon biscuits. I've been mean, just managing it for the month. So I told my spiritual father, Apostle Arome, about it. He said, ah, well, may you not make this mistake again <laughs> or repeat this foolishness. He now reminded me, the Bible says, love all men. He didn't say trust all men. Uh, I received wisdom that day. I learned obedience by the things I suffered. <laughs> So I'm saying all of that to tell you that not everybody that is even speaking in tongues around you should be your friend. They are, see, it's okay. This is a Christian. I'm a Christian. Great. Bam. You are fine. See, allow God to even tell you you should be your friend. Don't just make friends because, oh, I'm, I need friends around, so let me just... Even when you are picking spouse, somebody can be good but not good for you. Are you hearing me? Don't just make friends on the street. That's not how spiritual men operate. No, no, no. So this weekend, be mindful of your conversations. Be mindful of the things that you watch. Be mindful of the, of the kind of information you allow to feed your mind, you feed your mind with. Be mindful of the ads that you even allow. In fact, you might, some of you even need, need to take a break from social media this week. You've been on social media since January till now. Take breaks more. Allow God to speak to you small. <laughs> Because you are too distracted. Satan can see activity. God wants to speak. And then he will quickly now inspire. He said, have you scrolled today? <laughs> because you know that if you scroll, you will be, you will be hooked on that thing for like one hour. And God is trying to speak to you. You will not be doing one false prayer. be doing... Double tap. 
Korima Sataya Bariako. Hmm. You don't see this? <laughs> let's be serious, eh? Let's be serious. Let's, let's be serious. Let's be serious. Let's be serious. Elohim Adonai. Oh. Elohim Adonai. Oh. Elohim Adonai. Oh. Just stand on your feet where you are. Elohim Adonai. Elohim Adonai. Just pray where you are and say, Lord, I receive these words. And we, let's go ahead and pray. And make a decision to mind your mind this week. Make a decision, make a decision that this week, from this week moving forward, I'm conscious of the kind of information I allow into my space. I'm deliberate about the conversations that I have. By the wisdom of God, every wrong relationship around me is exposed. Wrong and unfruitful relationships exposed. By the wisdom of God, they are exposed. They are exposed. Wrong decisions that are a product of wrong relationships are exposed. You can pray louder, pray more fervently. We are a people of prayer. We believe that prayer must be fervent and effectual. We are passionate when we pray because we believe in the power of prayer. That we are not praying to a dead God but to one who is alive. Unto thee shall all flesh come. We stand before you tonight and we ask, oh God, We receive grace of you. We receive wisdom from you. So let him ask, he that seeks wisdom. And you give and upbraid not. Just go ahead and declare over your life. From this week. Every avenue that Satan has exploited to plant the wrong information in my mind, they are exposed now. They are exposed now. They are exposed now. They are exposed now. Increase in discernment. In the name of Jesus. Amen.